time that she was a child being raised in a Catholic home and her brother going out and getting to hearing about the Lord and getting the Holy Ghost and turning his family upside down. Deeper and yeah. deeper. 
deeper in it. It's harder and harder to get out. Well, I am free trying to struggle in the muck and the mire in here. I am going to let God take my hand every day and lift me out of the muck and mire. Set my feet on solid ground and step me in my place. I'm thankful tonight that He gives you chance after chance after chance. He never gives up on you. He forgives you 70 times 7, over and over and over. All He asks is that you come to Him with a heart of repentance. David, Lord, David made mistakes, but he had a heart of repentance, and that's why he was a man after God's own heart. Because he repented. He was sorry for it, and that's the point we need to get to, church. We need to be sorry for what we've done. Turn from it. Don't, don't go back to it. Leave it there. Go forward from here.
I'm just so thankful for what the Lord has done for this church. I'm so thankful to see us in this beautiful building. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so thankful that he made a way for us when we thought, when I thought, I can't see you guys, but I thought that there was no way we would be able to be in this building, but he made a way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so thankful. Thank you.
She moved in with, with my mom and me and my sisters, and our home was falling apart, and our lives were in, in chaos. And when the bird came into our home, that was such a, like Sister Trouble says, it was such a God thing. Yes. That there was stability in our home that she provided, and love that she provided, and she helped my mom keep an even keel. And I just want to thank God. He Amen. orders Amen. our steps. Yes. Every little piece. Yes. We're just a big puzzle. And how beautifully that he takes care of us. Um, while we were singing this song tonight, I was thinking of that other song. Hold on to Jesus Amen. and ride out your storm. Amen. I don't care what you got going on. God knows right where you are. Verse 3 says, then 
and they had swallowed us up quick. When their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Let me tell you something. The waters would have drowned us. We would have drowned in the waters. But God. The reason we didn't drown is because the Lord was on our side. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowls. The Bible didn't say the weapon wouldn't be formed. Oh, but the Bible said that it wouldn't prosper. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. We've escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowls. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord. It says, you shall go through the waters. Yes. They yes. shall not overflow thee. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, you shall walk through the fire, and you shall not be burned. Yes. Neither shall the flame yes. kindle upon you. Yes. And when I, when I was coming up in the church, as just a young boy, we had a youth choir. And the youth choir, was one of the songs we were saying is, we've been through the fire, yes. but the flames did not burn us. Oh, oh Lord, we've been through the blood. Yes. For we're built on a rock and we have a firm foundation. And we're going to march into the glory when that final trumpet sounds. Hallelujah. Song says, Who is this that I see coming out of the wilderness, dressed in robes of white, leaning on her beloved? Who is this that I see coming out of the wilderness? It's the church, the bride of Christ, and her groom. Church. It's going to be a glorious church without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, or any such thing. My God, but we got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Oh, we can't look at the angry waves that are tossed, tossing us to and fro. We can't look at the situation because if we look at the situation, we could almost drown. But we got to keep looking under Jesus. Amen. I remember the story of, of Elijah the prophet. And soon after his victory over the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the grove, Jezebel sent word that she was going to have him killed. Come on, somebody. And I'm in the 19th chapter of 1 Kings. And here, Elijah, after one of his greatest victories, he started running from Jezebel. Come on, somebody. Why did you run from Jezebel? Why did you have fear in your heart when God had not given us the spirit of fear? The blood of power and of love and of a sound mind. Some of the times that fear can overwhelm us. Some of the times that the floods of fear can we can almost drown in it because we're not looking unto Jesus. But here he was running from Jezebel. And he ran into the wilderness. He laid down under a juniper tree. And he said, it is enough now. He said, it's enough now. He said, Lord, take away my life. He said, for I'm not better than my fathers. Can I get a witness here tonight? Yeah. Have you ever been there? I've been there. At times, even now, I'm there. And I look at my life because we've got to examine ourselves. Whether we be in the faith. Because we've got to be better than our fathers. Amen, somebody. Amen. Better than our natural fathers. And we've got to go further than two of our spiritual fathers. Amen, somebody. And, and sometimes discouragement can get a hold of you. Amen, somebody. Sometimes fear can get a hold of you. Sometimes depression can get a hold of you. He said, it's enough now, Lord. Take away my life. For I'm not any better than my father's word. But you see, he took his eyes off of Jesus. He took 
took his eyes off of the Lord. My God, so we stop to look at the time. And then after, after he said that, the Lord provided nourishment to him, provided food for him. And then he went, the Bible says, to a cave. Amen, somebody. And then the Bible says that the Lord sent a wind, a strong wind. It says that it breaks the mountain in pieces. It broke the rocks in pieces. It says that the Lord was not in the wind. It says then God sent, glory to God, an earthquake. But God was not in the earthquake. Then he sent a fire, and the Bible says God was not in the fire. Then it says he sent a still small voice. And it wasn't just a still small voice, but God had something to say. Come on, somebody. And what did God say? And it's the 
inside. We've got to believe God that He can do what He said He can do. That His word is true. My God, my God. You remember when the when the disciples were with Jesus on the Sea of Galilee. And a storm came. Here Jesus was asleep on the boat. And here the disciples, they thought they was going to perish. So what did they do? They started panicking. Come on, somebody. They were at their wit's end. Surely we're going to perish. Surely we're going to go down. So they woke up Jesus. My Lord. And what did Jesus do? They said, you care it's not that we perish. Jesus got up. He said, peace. Be still. He rebuked the wind and the waves. But after he got done doing that, he looked at his disciples and he said, where is thy faith? Come on, somebody. The Lord would say to some of us, where's your faith? Come on, somebody. Jesus didn't say to them, you don't have no faith. As he said to some people in his ministry, you faithless and perverse generations. No. He had, he knew they had faith. But he said to them, he said, where is your faith? And the same, by the same token, just as God won't say to you, where art thou unless you're in the wrong place. Just like God will not say, what well, do us out here unless you're in the wrong place. By the same token, he ain't going to say, where is your faith? Unless your faith is in the wrong place. Can I get a witness? It's not that we don't have faith. Until every one of you is given the measure of the gift of faith. That's the word. We've got faith, but what have we done with it? Have we misdirected that faith? Come on, somebody. Have we misappropriated the faith? The faith that God gave us? My Lord. Even the U.S. Senate has appropriations committees. Come on, somebody. So funds are not misappropriated. So they're not misdirected. So they're not misallocated. What about our faith? Sometimes we have faith that we're going to fail. Sometimes we have faith that we're going to try. Sometimes we have faith that God will never do it for us. That's faith, but your faith is in the wrong thing. Your faith is supposed to be in the Word of God. It's supposed to be in His promises. Come on, somebody. We, but we, a lot of times, don't have faith. A lot of times, I don't have faith. One time, I came up the pastor. Talking to him, I said, Pastor, speaking of someone in my family, I said, God will never do this. I said, they'll never turn around. It'll never happen. God will never do it. Now, he didn't repeat me to my face, but I don't know, maybe he should have. But he just looked at me with mercy and he said, well, God has time to change hearts. Come on, somebody. He said, God can still change hearts. Why did he say it? Because that was faith talking. Come on, somebody. But a lot of times we curse our future. And we say, God will never do it. Because we have faith that he won't come through. We have faith that his promises will never come to pass in our lives. But I would say to you by the word of the Lord, church, where is your faith? You say, God will never do this for me. God will never put my marriage back together. God will never bring my unsaved children to the church. God will never heal me. God will never deliver me. God will never bring me out of generational curses. God will never deliver me from familiar spirits that plague my father and my grandfather. Come on, somebody. Stop. Why don't you stop cursing yourself? Why don't you speak blessing? Why don't you speak faith? I don't know what I'm true, but I believe that I know that God can do it. To him, there's nothing to it. I know I'll see you through with sweet victory. See, God can do it. What do we do? We have to go to the rock. Just say, who is that rock? That rock is Jesus. David said, when I am overwhelmed, he said, lead me to a rock that is higher than I. And who is that rock? This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sore. Be very sore. Your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. Somebody give God a praise. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Before we, before we move on to the end of the service, I, I just want you to come up greet. Let them know who you are, brother, and give them a testimony. Praise the Lord, sir. Praise the Lord. Y'all act like y'all done that for real hands. When you realize he woke you up this morning, clothing your right hand, blood blood running through your veins. You had the activity of your limbs, the use of your organs. You had a roof on your head, shoes on your feet. And when you think about that, and I say praise the Lord, they say it like we mean it. Praise the Lord, sir. He's worthy. Familiar with Pastor West, yeah. so don't go over your mind. <laughs> I've never been detailed, but God has had His hand in my back to join His team, and I've got to be obedient to that. But I am blessed. Not that I don't have trials and tribulations. I do. I have issues just like everybody else. But my blessings outweigh my complaints. Hallelujah. 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 My yeah. blessings outweigh yeah. my yeah. complaints. Yeah. When I say I am blessed and highly favored, that's what I mean. I'm not married, but as I look back over my life, yeah. I can truly see where he brought me from, where he brought me to. Yeah. I can truly say I've been blessed. And I love him because he first loved me. Yes. I'm not always looking for a hand at what God can give me. I just love him because he first loved me. Yes. I love him because of what I went through. Uh, how I was in the mocking Murray Clay and how he picked me up and turned me around and placed yes. my feet. Yes. I love him because he still has his hand on me. I give it out yes. on But enough about me. Saints of God. When I received the, the message from Facebook of the blessing that God has blessed you all with, good God from Zion, good God from Zion. I couldn't say anything but praise the Lord and hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Jerry, when I think of him from the moment that I met him, this is what I think of you, sir. I think of, 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 of 2 Thessalonians 3.13 coincides with uh, Galatians 6, 9, where it says, do not become weary in well doing. So induce it. You will read. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think of 1 Corinthians 15, 58, when it says, remain steadfast. I'm moving all the way to the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain. That's what I think about, sir. It's your fruit. Amen. Good God from Zion. This is your fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I, I cannot, I, I would be remiss if I spoke highly of my brother, Pastor Jerry, and then speak of you all. Yeah. You guys are, are prayer warriors yeah. behind the scene. Yeah. Pray steadfast yeah. for your pastor. It's important that you continue to pray yeah. for your pastor. Yeah. Uh, uh, when you fall down, you pray him back up. Yeah. Don't talk about it, don't put him down. But you pray back up. Yeah. The first prayer of a righteous man or woman, I'm paying that much. Y'all yeah. continue to pray for him. Pray his strength in the Lord. I'll continue to lift you this church up. Yes. Because God has brought each of you a mighty long way. Yeah. Good God. Mighty long. But I want you to understand something now. There's no song uh, in the world uh, years ago that some of you know, some of you younger ones don't know, but it said, it was entitled, It Only Just Begun. <laughs> you remember that? Said, see, it Only Just Begun. You said, see, you all had the audacity to pray steadfast. Yeah. Pastor had the audacity to remain steadfast. And, and, and now you done upset the enemy, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you all done upset the enemy so much that uh, you have no idea 
you know, Satan has a way of turning scripture around. Just like he did when he when he asked Jesus to the the uh, throw yourself off his mouth unless you take your heel on the stump, angels will catch you, protect you. Don't you know he took that out of Psalm ninety one? And, and anybody that will try to trip the word up by the word, <laughs> what limits will he stop at you and I? You know what I'm saying? It only just begun. So I'm reminded of what Ephesians said, or when Paul was ministering to the to the Ephesians in Ephesus. He said, "Put on the." Whole armor of God. Yes. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword, yes. the shield, yes. and shod your feet, it says, for the preparation of the gospel. Yes. Do you know what that means? That means getting a boxing style. Yes. And you shod your feet to knock the devil out of yes. You hear me? Because he's coming. He's coming. You get that back. The TV gets it. Kick, 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 get ready. <laughs> Just begun. Now remember now when it comes that, 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 that we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. And the weapons of our walk are not torn, but mighty through God. Yes. For pulling down strongholds and casting down imaginations to every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Having a readiness for disobedience when obedience is fulfilled. Saints of God. God bless you. But Think it not strange. The enemy will come. Stay on your knees. Keep praying. God love you. I love you too. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The, uh, there has been such a wonderful thing that has run through this, uh, this meeting tonight, especially. Uh, I, I actually got a, I'm, I'm mentoring a young man from Zimbabwe, Africa, and he messages me quite often. And he asked me a question today. He said, Pastor, he said, he's pastoring a church there. And he said, Pastor dear, he said, uh, somebody asked me, how do I know my call? And, and, and that was a great question because many people serving God, they lose out because they don't know their call. Because they think that immediately the call of God on their life is going to be revealed. Right. As soon as they come to the Lord, they're going to know exactly who they are, what they're called to do, what they're going to do. And they got, and, they, and and so when that doesn't come immediately, they get frustrated, they get angry, they, they, they get discouraged. And a lot of times they leave because they don't understand that the call of God doesn't come initially and immediately. It comes after a while. Uh, I told him, I said, I tell people all the time that you find the will of God doing the will of God. Uh, it's, it's like a flower. If you take a, a flower and, 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 and you're, you're wanting to, you get it at the, the flower store, I don't know what they're called, but anyways, you get them there and you take a little flower and you put it in the soil. It comes maybe just green. There's no bloom on it. It's just, it's just starting out. So what it has to do is it has to, number one, acquaint itself with the soil. And then it has to adjust to the soil. The soil has to become its home. Most people lose out on God right there. Because they're wanting to immediately bloom, but they have not yet committed to make the soil their home. Amen. Yeah, amen. And so, so you put it in the soil, and that's what happens to you. The Bible says you are the planting of the Lord. When the Lord calls you to the church, he plants you. You're not ready to, to win the world tomorrow. You've just been planted. So now you have to acclimate yourself to the soil. In other words, you come in clean. You come and help at the church when there's needed, needed help at the church. Come on, somebody. You come to church every time the doors open. You come to prayer meeting. You come to Bible study. This is how you acclimate yourself to the soil because the Bible said that you are to know them that labor among you in the Lord. And so you're learning people and you're fellowshipping. You, you, will, not, you will not hear. Uh, I'm trying to be careful. You may go into a church in this area 
And as soon as you walk in the door, they'll say, you're a prophetess. Run! <laughs> as fast as you can! Run! I'll just stop there. <laughs> I'm just telling you, let your feet take you as fast as they can out that door. Because that person is a heretic. I'm just letting you know. That's hard, but that's true. They got to work for you. Oh, I see you called into the mission. So I see, knock all that stuff off. If you are just newly coming to the Lord, just be happy to be a part of the church. Okay? Now, while you're acclimating yourself and adjusting and growing and getting the nutrients that's in... You're not anointed enough at this point to do the ministry. You're not wise enough at this point. If you're just coming to the Lord, you don't have enough wisdom to walk in the ministry. That's the reason why the Bible said, Oh, they not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, they fall into the condemnation of the devil. You have to be mature to walk with the ministry. You have to be. So what do I do, Pastor? How, uh, what's my calling? Forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together. That's part of your calling. That is part of the call of God in your life. Be witnesses unto me in to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, even to the innermost parts of the world. That's part of your calling. That really is part of your calling. It is better to be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. That's part of the call of God. Let the older women teach the younger. You have to be teachable. That's part of the call of God. Let the older men teach the younger. You're called to be teachable. You're called to be taught. While you're doing all of these things that may seem mundane and redundant, guess what happens? While the flower is taking the nutrients from the soil and the wise uh, uh, watchman of the house is using the word of God to prune the flowers and to get the flower ready. Because Paul did tell Timothy, he said, be instant and in season and out of season, yes, reprove, yes. rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Okay? That's because the pastor, the man of God of the house, the leader of that house, the bishop of that house, has to take the word of God and cut back here and cut back there and cut back here. Why? People say, they're trying to cut me back. No, no, no. We're trying to let you grow. Right. Because the flower will never grow to its full potential as long it is, as it is allowed to be wild. Right. Even plant life has to be disciplined to grow. So when you come into a church and you're just permitted to do whatever you want and still be on the platform, still be you believing in the music, you can just do whatever you want. That's because there is a pastor there that doesn't love the sheep. He loves himself. Because a true pastor will go, no, you can't do that and be used of God. No, you can't do that. You need to sit down and correct that behavior then come back up again. Why? Because in order for a child of God to grow in the field, of God's kingdom, they have to be pruned, they have to be disciplined, they have to be structured. That's part of the church. Now, it's not all in a shout all the time. We love to do that around here. It's not all in a dance all the time. We love to do that around here. But the greatest part of ministry is getting you ready for ministry. To son, he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. Now, as that flower yields, it doesn't reject the pruning. It doesn't reject the cutting back. It doesn't reject the discipline. It doesn't just die. It doesn't just give up and fold. But there's something inside that flower that says, I'll still come back again. I'll, I'll go to church. I, man, tonight, Pastor really stepped on my toes and he a little bit, but I'm going to be in church on Wednesday night. When we said I made a pastor said something that really cut me, but I guarantee you on Sunday morning, my, my telling will be in that seat, and I will be praising God, and I'll be listening to the word of God as the 
flower accepts the pruning. As the flower lets their roots go deep into the church, all of a sudden in the process of God's wonderful time, a bloom will begin to come out. And the call of God that you've been looking for will reveal itself. If you're an evangelist, the evangelist will come out. If you're a prophet, the prophet will come out. Come on, somebody. One day, while you're walking into the will of God, you will walk right into the destiny that God has on your life. This is where we're getting in trouble. We're trying to produce numbers instead of trying to produce quality. And so we're giving people these prophecies and these titles. Some churches you go in, everybody's a missionary, an evangelist. I mean, there ain't a person in the church just there. But just be satisfied to be a child of the living God. I told you all a couple weeks ago, we don't need any more great leaders right now. We've got a lot of really great leaders. We need some really great followers. Because leaders are inconsequential without followers. You know what I saw over here Friday and Saturday? I saw some really great followers. But their leader wasn't sitting in an air conditioning office while the work was going on. Either. In fact, man, I can feel it about right here. But that's all right. We're here, saints of God. And that's what matters. But I just want to encourage you. Hold on. Hold on to Jesus. Yeah. 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 Just hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Be here. Learn. Yeah. Listen. Grow. Change. Be correctable. Be leadable. Be teachable. Amen. Because this church has a great destiny. Yeah. Great destiny. Yeah. Not just here. Not just in the States. But God is allowing us to touch people internationally. Look, look at my Facebook posts. You see people from all over the world commenting on the videos. Yes. And these are not people that I don't know. Most of them I know who they are. And God's permitting us to minister to people all over this area, all over the United States and around the world. And I thank God for this place. When I walked in here the first time, I knew this was ours. But I also knew it was too small. And the only reason why I was willing for this building is because of the property around me. I'm going to praise God for the moment. Because I thank God for what we have now. But let me tell you something. It really has only just begun. Amen. So I thank God for it. Now we're going to take up our offer. <laughs> if you if you faithfully give and you see God honoring his word, you would rejoice at the offering. Brother Ralph Smith used to say uh, he's not dead and awaiting his reward uh, in the resurrection of the kingdom of God. But he used to say all the time, he'd say, God's shovel is much bigger than yours. Not only are we, listen, tithes and offerings are great. I give those. But also, it's time to start thinking building fund. Because we got to pay for the building. And, and we will pay our payments because God has made a way for that. It's amazing what God has done. I'm just telling you. But we've got things up here that we need to remodel. Uh, we've got picnic tables that we need to buy. And before I consider buying chairs for the sanctuary, All right. we're going to buy picnic tables for that shelter. Right. Amen. Because I thank God for this place, but we've got places to sit here, Brother Joe. But we need places outside that we can fellowship. And one thing I love about this property, we're never going to have to go to another place again for fellowship. 
And I want to say this, and this is going to get me on pastor mode. Number one, unless children go into the bathroom, I don't want them leaving the sanctuary. Because number one, I'm talking in there. I'm talking, and, and, and kids, listen to me, and saints. Don't burst through my door. Amen. All right. All right. If my door is closed, knock on it. If my door is open, knock on the doorpost. All right? That's just respect and honor, all right? I'm not trying to be mean, but we got to show some respect for the house of God and for the leadership, right? Y'all know me. I'm not big dog, Pastor Jared Manning, but there are some things we need to, we need to do to show honor to the position that God has given uh, to, to his people in the church. <laughs> I want the children to stay in the sanctuary and, 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 and the saints of God, if they got a bladder problem, we'll pray for them and God will heal them and they can go to the bathroom. But I don't want children leaving the sanctuary and staying gone for a long time. Amen. Here's the reason. We have those doors closed. We are not in an open building like we over on East Carter's Valley. All right? I don't want them to be out there out and, and, and unwatched. Now we've got ushers and usherettes that will help us with that. And if children go out, ushers and usherettes, you go out with them. Make sure they come back in here. Because I want them to be safe. All right? We don't know who's coming through that back door. I want them to be safe. And so remind your children of that. Secondly, um, we, we I'm going to talk. I'm going to try to get a hold of the ministry director of the campground next to us. Uh, I don't know, Brother Earl. We came out here, what, a month ago? I think something like that. And we were walking around because our property line extends past uh, the creek. It goes almost up to the platform that they have built up here, and it comes around like this. All right, so we were walking around trying to see all the property. And the ministry director came down as he should. They were having camp, and he wanted to make sure who we were. And he said, you know, our peak times are June and July for the camp. He said, but any other time, he said, I have to talk to the board, but I'm 100% sure you guys can use our stuff over here. Not only that, we told him we had a school, and he said, yeah, you guys can come over here and use our equipment. Wow. Wow. So we don't need to build a playground. But here's the deal. We go over there and tear stuff up. We go over there and leave trash all around. I, 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 was, I was stunned. I came out last night to leave, and there were cups, cups, laying on the ground outside. I thought, what are we doing here? We're not even in this building all the way yet, and we're littering on the ground already. There are trash cans here. You can throw them in the trash can. And maybe at your home, you all just walk around and throw things on the floor and throw things out in the yard. Maybe some of y'all do, I mean. You look at some of these houses around here, some folks do just throw anything out in the front yard. I mean, it is honest to God. But we're going to take care of this wonderful place that God has given us. And we're going to take care of their stuff over there. Because we want to make sure that we have a good relationship with that Bible camp. Listen, we want to have a youth camp. I'm, we're going to St. Louis to meet with all the brothers uh, in September. We've been looking for a Bible camp. We haven't been able to really locate one. And it just dawned on me the other day. We're sitting beside one, and they said, as long as it's not their peak hours, that using it should be no problem. So how awesome will it be to bring youth from all over the United States and have them come here and have a wonderful youth camp? Do you see what God's doing for us? So we want to take care of our relationship over there. That means don't go wandering over there when they're having camp. Nobody should be over there unless we're using it. I know some of our property is over there, but just stay this side. Because they have young people over there, and they're wanting to protect their young people just like we want to protect our young people. And if we have people rogue just walking all over around there, that's going to put a real bad taste in somebody's mouth. We want to make sure that we keep a good relationship with our neighbors so that what so we can use that, that place over there. And so I'm really excited about this thing. This is an incredible thing that God is doing for us. And our, our, our kids in the school, they're not going to be playing on asphalt anymore. 
Who's calling? <laughs> They're going to be playing all over this property over there. I, Xander and Abram were down in the creek about two hours last night trying to catch crawdads and didn't get one of them. <laughs> we, we, we're going to have to teach them how to quickly grab them crawdads. Hey Amen. I, I, I went crawdad, you know, back in the day. I might have to get down in the creek with them and show them how to just lift up that rock real quick and put that cup down, get it home of it, grab it by its side. Don't grab it by its head because you will pay. Am I right? Am I right? But also, if we have young children, like Jeremiah and Caleb and Cameron and Brayden and Zoe, I really don't want them in the creek unsupervised. So parents, I want them to have fun. I want them to use that creek and get in there while it's summer and have all kinds of fun. Because that's an awesome thing. I loved creeks when I was a kid. I want them to be able to use that. But please make sure if your children are down there, they're supervised because, you know, we have water moccasins and things like that in our area, and I just want to make sure they're safe, all right? So the young ones, let's make sure that they are supervised. But how many y'all are thankful for this place? Isn't this awesome? Isn't this wonderful? Amen. Praise God. And Brandon and Ken, they're really happy about it because they're back there high and lifted up. <laughs> There are a couple things that we want to do. We do want to get this off of the, the stage area here. We want to put, we're going to put televisions up on each side. So that that's what we're going to use for the projection system. We're going to mount them up and then we're going to have it mounted back there. Um, we, we want to redo the platform. I was looking at it today. We may not be able to cut it back as much as we thought we were going to. But I want to cut it back a little bit so y'all can have all kinds of room down here to pray with each other and dance and shout and praise God. Uh, so we're going to be working on that. Uh, we're going to be building the handicap ramp out here. But you know what all this costs? Money. It costs money, right? And so think about it. I want you to think about it. You Give your tithes and your offerings because the building fund is beyond that. Like don't make your tithes and your offerings the building fund because that's not a building fund. That's your tithes and offerings. Everybody say amen. amen. Give your tithes and offerings. But I told Chandra the other day, I said, you know what? We can at least put back $25 a week and give to the building fund. So we have committed to $100 a month to the building fund. Now maybe some of you have friends and family members and, and, and you know what? We're not looking for a building, we're in it now. That helps people have a little bit more confidence in giving. Maybe you have family members and, and, and friends that, you know, you could say, hey, we're, we're having a building fund. Would you like to give to the building fund? We're in the building, but we got stuff we want to do. We want to pay it off. I want to pay this building off in five years. In five years, I want this building paid off. How many of y'all believe we can do that in five years? You know what I love about this? And, and, and I'm not speaking evil because things happen and, and life is life. But when I was younger, just first in the ministry, the church that I was a part of was under such a heavy weight financially concerning the mortgage they were under that the church couldn't do anything because we didn't have any money. We were just trying to pay the bills. God has blessed us in such a way that we don't have to do that here. Amen. Praise God. So let's get this building paid off real quickly. If God blesses you with extra money, uh, right now, I think, isn't it 52000 is what we owe on? Imagine that sense. All we owe on this property is $52,000. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's incredible. We got it for $129,000. We had $80,000 worth of donations come in up front. And now we're down to $52,000 to pay this bill off. In fact, Sean is going to live stream, so give me a second. If you're watching on live stream and you would like to give, Simona, did you put a link down there? Simona's going to put a link down there, and if you would like to give to the building fund, all you got to do is click on the link. Simona Baldwin is who you're looking for. <laughs> all right? Because she, she has this huge long post and then the link down at the very bottom. And so you have to click on more or 
you know, further on. And then, once you click on the link, you can give to the building fund. How do y'all believe that we can raise $52,000 in a year? Yeah. I thought yeah. that was really yeah, wait a minute. You know, that could be God right there. If you've got an extra $52,000, just let me know. And you would like to sow into this ministry, just click on that link and send $52,000. Amen! Glory to God! Or if you've got just $52,000 laying around. But maybe some of you all have $500 or $1,000 or $100 just laying around that you say, you know what, let me give that to the church because we want to get some of this stuff. We're going to have brothers and saints of God, not just brothers, but some sisters as well from Africa and from around the world that are going to be here November 1st and say to help us to dedicate this building. Super excited about that. It is going to be a wonderful time in the Lord. And we're going to be here all day Saturday. Uh, we're going to be here Friday night and all day Saturday. And we're going to hear from men of God from all over the world and all over the country. Uh, I believe Brother Weatherburn is going to be here from California. So we're looking forward to that. Praise God. Uh, Pastor Isaac and Sister Charity Jerry from Pittsburgh said, Pastor Jerry, we're coming. Just let us know when it's going to be. They're coming. We just got people from all over the nation around the world coming. I'm going to have this church, the inside of this sanctuary done with what we're going to do initially when they get here. Y'all believe we can do that? I believe we can do that. But it's going to take some sacrifice on our part. All right? It's going to take some budgeting on our part. All right? So let's be faithful in our giving. All right? Amen. Amen. So Pastor, you talk a lot about money. It's because it takes money to run ministry. Amen. But I'm just so glad, saints, that we're going to be able to pay the mortgage of this church, the bills, and not be under just unbelievable strain. Because I know that you all are going to be faithful in your giving. I know that some of you all that are not tithing right now and giving your offering, you're going to do it. Because I know the Lord's going to touch your heart and you're going to give and God's going to send in workers and givers. And we're going to see this church do exactly what God's called us to do. Somebody say praise the Lord. All right. So we're going to give. If you're giving in the building fund, there is an offering envelope. It should be in front of you in the pew. It's the same offering envelope that we've been using. But there is a section, I believe, on that offering envelope that says building fund. So if you're giving to the building fund, would you please uh, make sure that you, uh, that you notate that uh, in, 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 the, in there so that Sister Cheryl and I will know exactly what you're giving. All right? Because I don't want to put something where it doesn't belong. So if you're giving your tithes and your offerings, put that in there. But if you're giving to the building fund, let us know because we have somewhere else we can put that to where we can raise money to get things done. And I really, I want to make double and triple payments on this loan every month. I really want to do that because that's less money that we have to pay the bank in interest. Somebody say praise the Lord. So we're going to give. Y'all ready to give? All right, let's stand on our feet. Praise God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much that you've gathered us here, that you've called us into this place. And now, Lord, we're prepared to give. We're prepared to continue our worship, God, as we take the seeds that you have put in our hand. We place them in the soil of your work, and we know they will produce fruit in their season. Now, bless those that have to give tonight. Bless them abundantly, God, as you watch over your word to perform it concerning them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. As the ushers come forward, amen. Let's 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 get this offering.
Christ's saints. Ah, so glad to have everyone here. So glad to have the Bill with us. So glad. So glad. So glad, yeah, so glad to have Sheila with us. Amen. Amen. We're just so thankful for all that God has done. Thank you, everybody, for making me feel at home. Amen. Well, we're so glad. In fact, I have a picture of him and Brother Goodwin hanging up in my office because they made an indelible impact on my life. And uh, I thank God for them. And I love what Brother Brian said. We must be better than our fathers. They were great men of God. But we must go further. We must go further. And I thank God for them. So thank you. That was an honor. And we're glad you're here. Amen. And you should feel at home here. I've known Sheila long. Well, she's known me before I knew me. <laughs> but I thank God uh, for them. My, in fact, my grandmother, Sister Mae, um, I don't know how many years, but Sheila and her brother Heath were in their home, and they, they helped to raise them. 45 years. Wow. How old were you when you came into their home? 13. And from that point, moving forward, me and Papa helped to raise them and love them and, 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 and do what they could to help them along the way. And so she has been a part of the family for a long time, a long time. And so we're glad to have her. All right, so announcements. Um, Mount Olive Baptist Church in Johnson City uh, at uh, 810 Montgomery Street uh, is having their anniversary service August the 25th, two Sundays from now at 3 p.m. And they have sent me a message and said, Pastor Jared, would you please come preach our anniversary? And so I told the Lord wherever he would open the door, I'm going to go preach. And so we're going to be, we will not have Sunday evening service that night because we will probably be there till about 6 o'clock. Uh, so we are going to be at their anniversary service August the 25th, 810 Montgomery Street in Johnson City. If you need the address, you can see Sister Monique or you can come up and take a picture of this if you would like. Another thing for the kids, don't come up on the platform unless you're asked to. Amen. This is off limits to children unless we say, hey guys, come up. And I've told the boys uh, in, in school, I said, if we invite you to come up, come on up. But you stay there. If you want to shake our hands or say something to us, you stay there until you're invited up. Because we just want them to understand protocol and respect. It's just good for them. Amen. So we're going to be there at 3 p.m. All right? Mount Olive Baptist Church in Johnson City, August 25th. I'll be preaching their anniversary service. Our church dedication services are going to be November the 1st and the 2nd. We'll have all the information out on that here in the next week. Uh, Brother Retivity's meeting in Atlanta at the House of Transformation in Atlanta. It's going to be November the 7th, 8th, and 9th. Uh, I'm going to be there. Uh, I'm looking forward to what the Lord will do. Uh, God told me to be a friend to him, and that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be a friend to him. And so we're going to help uh, to support that meeting. So please mark that on your calendars. I really want us to travel to some of these meetings. They're a blessing. Now, some of them are crazy and insane. And some of them, you beat your head against the pew in front of you and say, why did I come here? But blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Right? So we go and we say praise the Lord and go on our way. Um, prayer requests, labors. Shonda? I have another announcement. Shonda has another announcement. We have a school fundraiser planned for yes. Thursday, August 29th at Pi 5 on Stone Drive. And how it works is between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m., we get 10% of all sales. So we're trying to make some operating money for the school this year. So please, August 29th? August 29th. It's on a Thursday. 5 to? 5 to 8. eight. And we're going to have flyers. Pie 5 It is on Stone Drive. It's a pizza place. I really like Pie 5. It is really good to eat. And you don't, um, so I mean, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, I will have flyers Wednesday night. See me if you want to take flyers to work or pass out or whatever, but we need your help with that, please. Because again, 10%, we bring in $5,000 to them, we get 500. We bring in $10,000 to them, we get 1,000. 
I almost said 1,000. That shows you how tired I am. But look at God. So get the information from Sister Chandra Wednesday, Sunday at the latest. Pass out the flyers. Let's raise some money for our school. This is a wonderful thing. I really love our school. And again, if you can help in the school, help. Your pastor's teaching full-time. Sister Chandra's teaching full-time. I get a salary here. She can't get no salary. But she's willing to do it because she loves our children. But if you can help, I mean, even a day a week. Sister Cheryl works for me on Tuesday so I can have Bible study with uh, with, with uh, Brother Whiteside and Brother Dial and the other ministers. It is such a huge help. Just one day a week. If you can come in one day a week and help uh, to teach uh, the, the upper classroom, I would be so, so very great for you. If you can't, if you don't want to dedicate to teach a whole classroom, if you can just come in and help us, like make copies, help the children be there so the ch younger children can read to you. These things are a huge help. So let's make an investment in our school this year and let's help these children grow in the grace of God so we can teach them not only math and English, but we can also teach them a Christian oral view, okay? All right, so prayer requests. We need to pray for laborers. Brother Alan, Sister Donna, need our prayer. Sister Annette McDonald. Uh, in fact, Sister Annette said, really pray for her because she wants to be back in church. She really desires. That is the desire of her heart. We're going to pray that that will happen. Uh, Brother Jesse, Sister Chantel's brother, really needs our prayers. The devil's a liar. We just, we just, in the name of Jesus, break that stronghold over his mind. We see that word right now to where he is. And I believe it's done. Brother Shannon, glad God touched him. We're going to pray that God keep touching him. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. And remember, you remember the blind man? Yeah. The Lord touched him. Right. He said, what do you see? He said, I've seen men as trees walking. And guess what happened? The Lord touched him again. And then he saw clearly. The healing is not always instantaneous. Sometimes it's one touch after another touch after another touch. All right? We want to pray for Sister Virginia. God really needs to help her. Sister Virginia's in a real bad shape, guys. We need to pray for her. Go by and see her. Go by and just talk to her. She she loves this church. She really loves this church, man. She does. Uh, my Aunt Barbie, we need to pray that God will open up a med medical facility here in East Tennessee that will do the same thing that she's getting done in St. Louis so that she can move here. She needs to be here. And so let's make that our earnest prayer for her. Solomon and Gavin always. Sister Betty Randolph, we want to pray for her. Sister Barbara and Brother Don Slusher. I know many of you are aching and hurting and sore. So we pray that God would heal you as well. Yes. All right, so Sister Barbara Ketron. Travis's mother. And his father. And father, mother, and father. We need to pray for them, yes. that God would touch and heal. She's such a joy to be around. Every She's just one of those people, when you talk to her, she just lifts your spirit up. So we want to pray for her, that God would touch her and heal her, and uh, that God would help her. How many of y'all are glad I've been, you've been in the house of the Lord tonight? Sean, really? Sister Betty Randolph, I forgot to say that this morning. She called me last night and said she was too ill to come today, but please tell the church that she loved everyone and wished she could be here. Yes. And she made sure she sent word to say, I was in there before Pastor Jared was. <laughs> Don't you too? Oh, I love Sister Betty. Good Lord. We want to pray for all these wonderful saints. So glad to have every one of you here. This is a good start. I am looking forward to the future. Sister Opal. Amen. Remember Tony. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Tony. Yeah. And Sister. Rose also asked us to pray. She's uh, she's got some health issues going on, and we want to pray for her that God would touch her. Amen. Then share the videos, post on your Facebook, take pictures of the sign. Let everybody know where we are because it was full in here this morning. But I'm ready for chairs to already start being put out in the aisle. I, I'm just saying it's time it's time to outgrow this place. <laughs> Uh, just begun. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for what you have.